Why would the farmer put the plow in the ground in the spring if he couldn't see the vision of the harvest when the summer is finished? Is it possible to see the finished harvest? And the answer is yes. We do that simply by faith. Key phrase, faith is the ability to see things that don't yet exist. And that's how things exist. How did this hotel get here? Someone saw it while the property was vacant. You say, well, is it possible to see this hotel when it isn't here? And the answer is yes, of course. If somebody cannot see it when it is not here, then it will never be here. So it's possible to see things that don't yet exist. When should you start building this hotel? This is a good question for your philosophical musings. When should we start building the house? When should we start? And here's the answer. As soon as it's finished. You wouldn't start building the house until you had it finished. If you just started laying bricks and somebody came around and said, what are you doing? And I'm just laying bricks and said, what are you building? And you said, I have no idea. See, they'll take you away to a safe place. So have you got that now? It's possible to finish something before you start. In fact, it would be a bit foolish to start until you had it finished. So human beings have this remarkable ability to finish something and then start. We've heard the old expression, don't count your chickens until they're hatched. Say, no, we have the ability to count our chickens long before they're hatched. Because we know, we have faith, we believe. We use the law of averages. There's, there's bound to be at least so many out of every dozen, out of every hundred, out of every 50. So it's possible to see the end, then begin. Start looking into the future of what you would like to accomplish, and where you would like to go, the person you would like to be, and see if you can't get a better picture of the finished objective. See yourself there, see yourself in possession of. I was in business with Bob Cummings, the old movie star for a while. He said, Decide what you want and then act as if you already had it. And being an actor, he could give us a few tips on act. Decide what you want and act as if it was already yours. Now, the reason we can act thinking that it's already ours is because not only can we vision the end results, we can also vision the beginning of making it real. So we don't start till it's finished, but it is possible for human beings to finish something before they start. Human beings are the only life on earth that has this incredible capacity to change the course of your life. No other life form can do that. Every other life form except human seems to operate simply by instinct and the genetic code. In the winter, the goose flies south. How often? Answer, every winter. If you said to the goose, hey, it'd be better this year to go west, he ignores that advice. And the reason is because he cannot make choices and listen to advice of something that might be better. He has to obey instinct and the genetic code. But now jot this down, not human beings. Human beings can alter the course of their life. Human beings can live one way for five years, tear up that script, live a totally different way the next five years. The first six years of my economic life, I wound up broke. Second six years, I wound up rich. Someone says, how did you do that? Here's number one, I discovered I was not a goose. Someone says, don't you have to do the second six years like you did the first six years and jot this down? No, no, you don't have to live the second six years like the first six. You can use all the information and all the advice and repairing all of your mistakes and adopting a new and refined philosophy so that the next six years can be totally different than the last six. No other life form can do this. See, if you were a tree, you'd be stuck. As a tree, if you used up all the nourishment that was around you and you couldn't change location, see, you would die. But that's not true. Human beings can change location, go north, south, east, west, live here for a while, live somewhere else for a while. So that's a note to make. You can greatly alter the course of your life. Because there's six rules, basically, that always have laid out in the rules of success. Now, let me get right away to the first rule of success. The first rule of success is to have a vision. You see, if you don't have a vision of where you go, and if you don't have a goal where you go, you drift around and you never end up anywhere. It's like you can have the best ship in the world. You can have the best airplane in the world. If the pilot or the captain doesn't know where to go, 
it would just drift around. It would not end up anywhere or most likely in the wrong place. I couldn't see myself becoming a farmer or a worker in a factory or anything like that. Even though my parents wanted me to stay there and have a normal life. My father wanted me to become a police officer like he was. My mother wanted me just to stay there and marry a girl with the name of Heidi, hopefully, and have a bunch of kids and run around like the Van Trapp family in the sound of music. But that was their vision, not mine. My vision was totally different. I felt that I was born for something special, for something unique, for something big. I want to become a bodybuilding champion, just like Reg Park. I want to get into movies, just like Reg Park. And I want to make millions of dollars and be rich and famous, just like Reg Park. So let me tell you something, visualizing your goal and going after it makes it fun. You've got to have a purpose no matter what you do in life. You've got to have a purpose. So that's rule number one, have a vision. Rule number two is don't listen to the naysayers. Don't listen to the naysayers. Everything I ever did, the thing that I heard out of people's mouth was, that's impossible. That can't be done. Or no. I remember when I wanted to be a bodybuilding champion, including my parents and everyone else around me, said, this is impossible. Why don't you become a ski champion? That's what they do in Austria. Or a bicycle champion that do some track and field. You can't be a bodybuilding champion. That is exactly what I heard. And of course, I proved to the people that it can't be done. So whenever someone said to me, it can't be done, I heard it can be done. When they said no, I heard yes. And when they said it's impossible, I heard it is possible. Because I am a strong believer. I'm a strong believer of what Nelson Mandela said. That everything is always impossible until someone does it. Well, I'm going to be the one, I said to myself, I'm going to do it and I'm going to show it to them. Maybe it has never been done before. That's perfectly fine with me. But I'm going to do it. And I did not listen to the naysayers. So this is why I say don't listen to the naysayers. And the next thing, the third point that I'm going to make to you is, before we sit down with Jürgen and talk about the rest of the three is, work your ass off. There is no magic bill. There is no magic out there. You cannot get around. You have to work and work and work. I can tell you, I've watched the day for half an hour, Jürgen and his wife that put on this show, this great, great event here. They work their ass off to, to put this together. All year long, they work and they work and they work. This does not come together by itself. When people say we don't have the time, we have 24 hours a day. We sleep six hours a day. So it gives you still 18 hours. There's someone shaking their head out here in front and say probably, I don't sleep six hours, I sleep eight hours, right? Or just sleep faster. So we have 18 hours a day. The average person works around eight to 10 hours. So let's assume it's 10 hours. So we have eight hours left. Then you travel around an hour a day, maybe two hours a day. So now you have still six hours left. So what do you do with these six hours? So you got to work hard. I mean, let me tell you something. When I went to America, I went to college. I went and worked out five hours a day. And I was working on construction. Because in those days in bodybuilding, there was no money. 